Today, we shall be looking at the structure and composition of atoms and the forces that hold the particles of the atom together. Firstly, we shall discuss these particles according to the standard model of particle physics just to get a sense of what is accepted in the physics community at the moment. Then later in the video, I will propose a simpler description of atoms, their structure and composition and explain using basic electrostatics the origin of the strong and weak nuclear forces. Remember, you are not to believe what I said just because I said it, or just disregard it because it contradicts what you already know, which might make you feel uncomfortable. I urge you to follow through the steps of the argument closely with an open mind, and then at the end, you can decide whether or not the model I present is gibberish, or whether it is a model that should be considered as the model of the atom. I will be delighted to get constructive arguments against or for the model from you. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like the video, please show me by giving a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not already done so to get more eye-opening contents like this. An atom is made up of a nucleus which has a net positive charge and electrons with negative charge placed in a circular path around the nucleus. The nucleus is made of two types of particles which are the proton and the neutron. The proton is positively charged and has a net positive charge of one atomic charge represented 1e which is equal to 1.6 exponential minus 19 coulombs and has a mass of 1.6726 exponential 24 kilograms which is equivalent to 1.0073 atomic mass units. The neutron on the other hand has a net charge of zero which means it is electrically neutral reason why it is not affected by an electric field. It has a mass of 1.6740 exponential minus 24 kilograms, which in atomic mass units is equivalent to 1.0078 atomic mass units. The proton and the neutron jointly called the nucleons, since they are found in the nucleus together. Electrons, on the other hand, are found outside the nucleus. According to the Rutherford model of the atom, these electrons orbit the nucleus in a circular path with the, with the centripetal force provided by the electrostatic attraction between the nucleus, which is positively charged, and the electron, which is negatively charged. The electron has a negative charge of one electronic charge which is equal to 1.6 exponential minus 19 coulombs, same as the proton. But this value is positive for the proton. So if you enclose an electron and a proton in a sphere, the net charge enclosed will be zero. Mathematically, the net charge enclosed will be minus 1e plus 1e, which is zero. Since the discovery of the neutron by Schardwick, neutrons were thought to be tiny spheres containing a single proton and a single electron, reason why they are neutral. Around the same time, radioactivity was discovered, and it was observed that neutrons could decay spontaneously to produce a proton and an electron with the emission of energy in the form of gamma rays. Nowadays, with the advent of particle physics, antineutrinos have been added as a product of this decay. This is called beta decay because an electron, which is sometimes referred to as the beta particle, is emitted. Since these electrons came from the nucleus, 
it was thought that electrons were present in the nucleus of the atom, specifically in the neutron. The equation for this decay is as follows. The neutron has mass but no charge, so the neutron number is 1 and atomic number is 0. The proton has mass of 1 atomic mass units and so its mass number is 1. And it also has a charge of plus 1 electronic units, so the atomic number is 1. The electron has negligible mass, so the mass number is 0. But it has a charge of minus 1 atomic charge unit. The antineutrino and the gamma rays have no mass nor charge. So you see, it looks like a neutron is made up by a combination of a proton and an electron. Look at the masses, how they balance. The mass of the neutron is 1.0078 atomic mass unit. The mass of the proton is 1.0073 atomic mass unit and the mass of an electron is 0.00055 atomic mass unit. So, you see that the mass of the proton plus the mass of the electron is equal to the, ma equal to the mass of the neutron. Look at the charge. The charge of the proton plus the charge of the electron is equal to zero, which is the charge of the neutron. That is not all. It was later discovered that a proton can capture an electron to form a neutron. That is, a proton and an electron can add up to form a neutron. The equation is as follows. So I think that it is clear that a neutron is made up of these other two particles, the proton and the electron. However, since the invention of quantum mechanics, this model of the nucleus has been set aside because they claim it is inconsistent with some of the principles of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics, which is full of many invented particles, forces and laws. What is more likely to be true? The structure of the nucleus, explained by the simple combination of protons and neutrons, which leaves the laws of physics in their simplest forms, or a complicated quantum mechanical model which has lots of conjectures, undiscovered particles and a lot of failed experiments. There is no way that physics laws can take their simplest form in quantum mechanics. As a matter of fact, quantum mechanics goes against everything we know, observe and experience in everyday life. If you are familiar with the history of the centrifugal force, you will realize that this was the same argument used to eliminate the centrifugal force in circular motion analysis problems where it was argued that because the centrifugal force had to be invented to solve problems, it had to be thrown out because there is another way to solve the problems without the need for the centrifugal force. And this other method was accepted because they claim it leaves the physics laws in their simplest forms. I know that quantum mechanics is wrong. And I have proven that in my other videos on the quantum gravity playlist. You can check the videos to see how easy it was to debunk quantum mechanics. So, because I have proven that it is wrong, I consider their all arguments derived from quantum mechanics as inadmissible in the explanation of the structure of the nucleus. But let me just say why they claimed the nucleus could not contain electrons or why neutrons cannot be a combination of protons and electrons. The first claim was that it was difficult to reconcile the proton-electron model for nuclei with the Heisenberg uncertainty relation of quantum mechanics. This was clearly in accordance to the assumption that quantum mechanics is correct. 
The next is that the observed properties of atoms and molecules were inconsistent with the nucleus spin expected from the proton-electron hypothesis. Both protons and electrons carry an intrinsic spin of one-half h bar. Isotopes of the same species can have both integer or fractional spin. That is, the neutron spin must be also fractional. But there is no way to arrange the spins of an electron and a proton that are supposed to bond to form a neutron to get a fractional spin of a neutron. Quick one. If there are experiments showing that a neutron is a combination of protons and electrons, and then the formalism of quantum mechanics is being contradicted by this model, shouldn't we throw away quantum mechanics instead of the experimental deductions? If you watch my other video titled What if solar systems have electronic configurations? You will see how I was able to write the electronic configurations for all elements without the need for the spin quantum number. Spin is just one of the things that were invented just to make quantum mechanics work. Check that video out and see for yourself. So you see that all the reasons why the proton-electron hypothesis was rejected came from quantum mechanics which I have made so many videos to show how wrong it is. So what did they introduce to account for the neutrality of the nucleus? The idea of quark, which can have fractional spins and charge to be consistent with quantum mechanics. They suggest that protons and neutrons are made up of two types of quarks, the up and the down quark. The up quark has a charge of plus two thirds of the electronic charge, while the down quark has a charge of minus one third of the electronic charge. A neutron is said to contain one up quark and two down quarks. So if you sum the charges, you have minus one third minus one third plus two third, which gives you zero. Hence, the neutron is neutral. Well, at least they still agree that the neutron contains both positive and negative charges. The proton, on the other hand, is said to contain two up quarks and one down quark, and the total charge is as follows, which is equal to plus one. They say for the reaction where a neutron decays to a proton and an electron, the proton and electron were not there to begin with, but were created during the decay. Now for the combination to work, they have to invent another new particle called the gluon to bind the quarks together. Things just keep getting more complicated, too complicated to be feasible. Now let's talk about my model for the nucleus. A model that represents a stable nucleus in the simplest form. The shape of the nucleus is always taken to be spherical for all practical purposes. So let's stick with that. Imagine you have a sphere like so. If you throw in smaller spheres, all identical and positively charged, into this large sphere, you will have these small spheres repel each other with so much force that will destroy the large sphere and everything will just spill out. Now, what if instead of placing all positively charged balls, we replace half of them with negatively charged balls? What will you observe? The system will jiggle a little bit as the balls arrange themselves in a way that there will be no net force on the system and the walls of the bigger sphere so that we can have a stable sphere. Remember, we do not care what kind of particles are in these tiny balls that give them their net charge. All we care about is that there are two types of char charges, positive and negative. 
so it is possible to have a tiny ball which is neutral. Now imagine instead of replacing half of the tiny positively charged balls with negatively charged ones, you replace the other half with neutral balls instead. What will happen in this situation? To answer this, let us isolate and analyze two of the balls, one positive and the other neutral. The positive ball will induce a dipole on the neutral ball. That is, on the neutral ball, the negative constituents of the ball will pile up closer to the positive ball, while the positive constituents will pile up on the opposite side, further away from the positive ball. If the charge of each pile is equal in magnitude to the charge of the positive ball, then we see that the effect of the positive ball will be neutralized by the negative charge pile in the neutral ball. Now, the net positive charge of this system that we started with seems to have moved to the right and now originates from the neutral body. Place another positive ball in the vicinity of this system and you experience repulsion. Now, let's go back inside the big sphere. The particles will arrange themselves in this way and the end result is that all the positive charge contained in the system will move radially outwards, leaving the innermost parts neutral. In the outer surface of the big sphere, the repulsive force between the charges will cause them to arrange themselves appropriate distances from each other so that equilibrium is attained. The net positive charge on the surface is equal to the net positive charge of the balls we started with. So we have ourselves a positively charged sphere that contains neutral particles as well. This is how Faraday's cage works. You can read more on that to verify yourself. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the like button as well if you are enjoying this video. I think it is obvious that the neutral ball is the neutron and the positively charged ball is the proton. If the nucleus is made of a proton and an electron, then we see that in the setup of the dipole, the electron, which has the same electronic charge as the proton, will be able to neutralize the proton, while the proton from the neutron will concentrate on the other end to give the impression that the proton has moved as we described earlier. The end result is that there will be no charge inside the sphere, but all the positive charges will be concentrated outside and in equilibrium. Therefore, we do not need any strong force for this system to work. So we have a description of the nucleus without the need to invent the strong force. This model leaves the laws of physics in their simplest forms. And from the argument of the centrifugal force I gave earlier, we can conclude that this is a better model of the nucleus and should therefore be adopted.